I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Ladies and gentlemen, Dave Sadler here for another edition of the Big Detecting TV Show. Welcome, one and all, everybody in the in the uh, chat room up to now. Uh, I can see Sky Jackson, hello. T TC Detects, uh, Tony Kaywood, Metal Detecting Land of Water, Matt All Detect B, Nick West, and Bob Hope. Good evening, everybody, and I hope you are well. Well, it's been one of them weeks, one of them weeks where us detectorists would have wanted to get out and have lots of fun. But when you touch the, the foot, the, the ground with your spade, it's rock hard. Uh, hopefully this little bit of rain that we're having in a minute will soften things up for us now that we are allowed out and about. So, uh, busy week in the news. Now things have started to appear back on the, uh, on the newspapers. We've got a series of news articles this week, so I'm sharing the screen, Mr. Higgins, and we'll get right into it. Now, this one was given to me by uh, Mr. our guest this evening, uh, not 10 minutes ago, which I didn't know about. A rare 50p found on the beach sells for £10,000. Only 600 were ever made. Uh, the rare 50p coin on a beach has been sold for £10,000 after it was listed on eBay. The Olympic coin was put into circulation nine years ago ahead of the 2012 Games in London. But the design of the swimmer coin was quickly changed with wavy lines removed from the front of the swimmer's face. That means the original is very much sought after. £10,000 for a 50p coin. Now, this uh, article I, I thought was fantastic. Uh, a Rolex belonging to a wartime pilot is now on its way to, the to its descendants uh, metal detectorist brian fern found the time piece from the 30s uh, with four friends from oxen treasure hunters and it was given back to the family so fantastic story um let me see it was uh, william roy driscoll who served in the raf volunteer reserve as a leading aircraftman and was a pilot under training based at raf white waltham and uh he and his instructor were killed in a tiger moth that went down in 1940. So, uh, fantastic news article, that. Look at this. A gold necklace from Roman times was found in a forest near Bruno. Uh, now, I'm not 100% sure where this is. Uh, let me see, let me see. Uh, Czechoslovakia. Historical mystery from... Go away. Roman times in the... Oh, God, these words. Zendais Forest uh, in very no. Well, amateur, why do they call us amateur? We, we, I've had this again today. We'll talk about it later anyway. So, uh, but treasure hunters uh, found the gold necklace dating back from the late period, the Roman period, the third to the fourth century. Stunning. Uh, I'm fed up with these bloody things popping up. Yes, I'm okay. There was an article about uh, night hawkers, uh, which you know we don't like to see, but this one had some input from people in the NCMD, and it turns out the article shows us in a better light than we are generally seen. Um, it's not too bad, the article, although it does raise the issue of night hawking again, which I don't like to see in the news. 
An NHS worker found a 670-year-old black death coin in a farmer's field. Uh, apparently, it's um, that headline is a bit of poo. <laughs> I think one of the relations of the amateur metal detectorist David Lowe. What's a professional metal detectorist? Uh, he stumbled across a weirdly relevant find along with among a pile of rubbish while searching land Rothbury, Northumberland. It's a 14th century half groat which was minted in London between 1351 and 1361 during the era of Edward III. There's news for the week. A uh, couple more updates. First and foremost, it's with um, a large degree of sadness uh, that uh, it was announced this morning that Stephen Gray, who is a very prominent figure in British metal detecting, his wife Rachel sadly passed away this morning. Uh, from myself and Luke, you know, our thoughts are with Stephen. I've contacted him today um, to offer our condolences. It's a very sad time. She was a lovely last Rachel. I only met her once at Detectable, but uh, sadly she passed away this morning. So our thoughts with Stephen Gray. I hope you're all right, buddy, and obviously you're not, but I hope things aren't too difficult for you, mate. So another sad piece of news. Uh, we... If those who watched the VE Day uh, episode we did with Julian, Evan Hart, a few weeks ago, we spoke to uh, Luke's mum, Mrs Higgins. can't remember her first name because my brain is addled. Uh, her mother, Nally Coombs, was one of the people who were discussed in the show uh, and her part in the war on VE Day, etc., etc., and sadly, uh, she passed away a few weeks ago as well. Um, so our condolences to Luke and his family. Um, again, you know, there's not much else I can say to that. Um, funny, funny bit of news. Uh, Graham Stokes, one of our friends and viewers, listeners, he uh, contacted me this week. He went metal detecting in Brighton, and he went over to get a bit of cockles and mussels from a, a fish, fishman stall. Uh, on the the prom there and uh, it's turned out that the the chap there was a metal detectorist as well who watches the show hello i don't know who you are but hello and um he said yes i like the fat fellow who sits in his little room (laughs) so i've made it i'm the fat fellow excellent i don't mind that Uh, i've started my dig ventures course this week an introduction into archaeology which uh, I think a lot of people have joined up on. I know Tony Kaywood has. I think Adrian Gaylor has as well, who's coming on in a moment, so he'll be able to tell us. Uh, I know there are quite a few other people who've joined uh, to Beginner's Course to Archaeology, and already there's some fabulous tips and information in there for for us doing the metal detecting. I think you know we all need to know this type of thing. Uh, and we've got multiple new articles up on our website as well. Uh, we asked the question a few days ago, do you believe in the existence of Bigfoot and what do you think it is? So we've got the results of that, uh, what people said, plus other information on Bigfoot, uh, the history of Bigfoot, basically. Uh, we also put a second article on today discussing the benefits of metal detectorists to the archaeological community by Alison Smith. This is being shared in all the archaeology and metal detecting magazine Facebook groups and the big metal detecting TV show group and also Twitter and I think Instagram as well, so you'll be able to get onto that. And we've got, I think, five more scheduled for the rest of the week. One tomorrow about Lud's Church history and mythology. Several uh, by Eric von Daniken, a cause for a little bit of concern in some respects. A lot of people don't hold to his uh, thoughts, uh, but we have put at least this in a pseudo-archaeology section. Uh, there's some Nazca stuff, some Egypt stuff, and some curiosities. And then we've got a summer solstice one. So that's us all sorted. And uh, away we go. Let's introduce our guest tonight, Mr. Adrian Gaylor. How are you, sir? Evening, Dave. Hello, everyone. There he is. Uh, Are you well? Yeah, very well, thanks. Um, I'd just like to um, follow on from what you said about Stephen and his family. Uh, He's part of the Rootless Expert, uh, Expert team, which I'm involved with. And uh, thoughts go out to him and his family for their loss. It's very sad. Certainly as it certainly as. Uh, yeah, obviously I knew she was wasn't very 
well and then uh, he posted this morning and uh, it was a very poignant post and uh, as I mm, said there's, there's not much we can offer but our support and uh, the support of hopefully the, the metal detecting community as well so uh, mm. I'm sure if anybody does reach out to Stephen he'll be uh, he'll be very busy and he'll have a lot to do and his mind will be on other things but I'm sure he'll appreciate uh, people's thoughts at the moment Yeah. so yeah, uh, yeah. Adrian I'm going to yeah. let you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself for the viewers, because some people will have seen you in the in the um, in the Facebook groups and in the the chat on here, but some people won't know. And of course, we've had you on as a guest on the podcast, so uh, well, well, introduce you yourself. Think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it nearly done it tonight, well. mate. It nearly yeah. done it tonight. I was faffing all about right. back and two before, but all sorted. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, basically, I've been detected. Well, been detecting since I was about eight or nine with my granddad um, who had a, a sea scope back in the 70s um, and as a kid sort of went out with my dad who had a metal detector as well um, and then you get married you have a family you have kids you don't have enough money to buy a machine and uh, now I'm getting a bit older uh, about five years ago got back into the hobby and since then I've uh, I like gadgets and I like playing with things, so um, from the basic machines right up to something that's technical, I, I like enjoying playing with it. And um, ra- randomly, I bumped into Julian Evan Hart uh, in a local pub near us at a club meet uh, about three, four years ago. And we got chatting, and uh, he realised I had a passion for the hobby, so um, I got talking with him, and he lent me a machine. Um, which I borrowed and did a field test on for him, uh, wrote a report, and uh, it was on the route to sort of 71, which I still own. And from there, uh, I've been fortunate to test quite a raid, wide range of machines through for Treasure Hunting Magazine, and also my own personal machines, which I buy. quite enjoy buying them off uh, sort of Gumtree and eBay, uh, ranging from safaris to golden masks, all types of machines, quests. So I've had quite a wide range of machines um but this month i've just written an article on the not to macro simplex second one uh the first one i wrote uh, towards the end of last year when it came out um and i think it's a simple machine hence the name simplex but i wasn't expecting the amount of support from not to macro on software update um i think there's been three or four since the machine came out Uh, I wrote an article on the most recent one, which is 2.77, which has got a lot of features. Uh, They've now since brought out another one yesterday, which is 2.78, but I thought I'd come on the show just to explain um, how it is a very simple machine, but if you want it to be a bit more than simple, with a bit more power and release some more benefits, you can update it to the latest software really easily, which I did a while back. Uh, when the off software update came out and uh, definitely noticed a, a difference with it for such a basic machine. You know, if you just want to turn it on and detect, you can, but if you really want to drill down into the settings and have a play and a tweak, it's worth updating the software. Now, I spoke to uh, to Dilla last week, a guest on the show, and, you know, yeah. she, from a manufacturer's and, a, you know, put perspective, she... Uh, introduced me to you know how to do things etc etc to discuss the updates as a detectorist uh, and you, you've mentioned that you, you do like the simplex and it is a good machine but as a detectorist who has updated with the new features what do you find is beneficial um there's there's lots of benefits i mean i could literally go through them there's I mean, with a software update, if it's on your PC or something like that, you expect it just to, I don't know, improve the energy savings or give you some new features like change the screen colours or something like that or search bar. Um, I'll quickly run through them. Um, They've added a new sensitivity level to give improved depth. Um, An extra mode for a park mode for detecting. Uh, with the originally it had one part mode, it's now got part mode one, part mode two, which I'll go into in a bit more detail. Uh, the all metal mode has now got um, uh, what has it got? Threshold setting, which it didn't have before. Uh, it's also got a mineralisation bar. Now we're, we're all talking about a machine that's two hundred seventy nine pounds. It's quite bizarre. Um, 
time out length, one of the things which I found really frustrating after using Simplex for a while, especially if you're a beginner, and you get, you, you're in the middle of the field, it's pouring with rain, and you click on the settings, and suddenly you get to the screen where you want to adjust your headphones volume or vibration or whatever. Um, by the time you've worked out how to do it, it time out and go back to the main screen. Um, they've now increased that, so you've got a lot more time to look and look at what you're changing and setting. Um, they've also put a back function arrow, so whereas you used to have to click all the way through the settings and then click through to get back to the start, you just press one button, it takes you back. Um, they've also got the ID depth has been increased. Um, so let's say you've got a target, I don't know, 10 inches, and it's on its side, and it's, it's, it's given a signal, but it's not given an ID. They've now improved that so that it will give you an ID. However, yesterday they updated the software again to <laughs> remove that, or it's a bit confusing. They've said it will either disappear or it will appear, but they've said that, if you're happy with how the machine is, to leave that update. Um, uh, they've also got automatic brightness levels, so you can adjust the brightness strength, which is good for increased battery life. Um, the headphones, you can now adjust the volume on headphones. There's a few issues in the past about the, the sound levels on the headphones. And my favourite feature, believe it or not, um, is we all get this time when you're detecting. Depends what some machines that have it, some don't. You get your pinpointer out, your machine's on, and you get, it's all buzzing and fuzzy. There's a mute button. You just hit it, and it cuts the sound on the detector. So your pinpointer doesn't affect it. And for me, I love that, because there's nothing worse than bloody, got your, pin, sorry, put, got your pinpointer in the hole, and your machine's buzzing away. You've got your headphones on. So that noise for, uh, cancel function's really good. Um, the manual ground balance has also been expanded, so you can tweak, not that the basic detectorists would play with that really, but you can adjust your manual ground balance now to more levels. Um, and I think I've covered it all. Uh, and then off the back of that, they also announced yesterday that one of the issues I have being six foot eight, um, sorry, five foot 10, um, is I like a long, this is gonna sound really double entendre, I like a long shaft. <laughs> um, and with the really? simplex, yeah, I love it. A big black long shaft on the simplex. When do you extend it? Um, it can sometimes be a bit wobbly. Um, and I have found that. The, the big so, black shaft. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it wobbles a lot. Um, so yesterday, Dilek announced that they're launching a, a, an, an extra 10 centimetres, not inches. Um, which you can interchange on, on your machine. So that, that will help people who are or taller or like me, like a long shaft. <laughs> um, so, uh, oh, I've got to be careful on that. Uh, as well as um, they're looking at developing carbon shafts, fiber shafts as well. Yeah. So, uh, and also um, coils. They're looking at bringing out, uh, I think it's almost imminent. Uh, in the next few days or weeks on potentially after testing they're bringing out some new coils uh, for the Simplex as well so um, yeah I did like mentioned last week it's uh, something like the 9.5 by 5.5 elliptical and 8.5 double D words that's a fact <laughs> sorry double D sharp <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah yeah it's great. And I, I think um, I've seen some comments on forums and things about some people saying um, it's a simple machine. It's starting to be tweaked too much to make it not simple, which yeah. I tend to disagree with. Because if you're a beginner, you're, you're just going to turn it on and detect. And I think what I like about it is if you've had the machine for, say, six months or a year and you want to explore more features and functions, they're they're there to use um which i personally like doing you know my roots are sort of 71 that's one of the reasons i like that machine because if i want to hand it to my daughter to go detect and i can she can turn it on put it in basic mode and off she goes however yeah. once i get it i can go in and multiple levels of tweaking and playing around um so yeah it's 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 uh it's good with the features they've brought out definitely do you know, for the first time in all of the uh, TV streams that we've done tonight, I've just had a moment that's completely done me adding. 
Next door neighbor's dog seems to be outside and the doors are closed by the sound of it. And from about 30 minutes now, all I've heard is yapping, constant yapping. My wife's just come in from work and our dog started barking, so I had two of them either side and my head was totally discombobulated. What a word. But without double D and big shark, blimey. Yeah. <laughs> and extra 10 inches. Now, I've got up on my phone uh, a picture of the Simplex screen. Now, this is an early one, I'd, I'd presume, because it hasn't got everything that I can see on, on mine currently. So am I right in saying there's currently uh, an all-metal mode, uh, a ploughed yeah. field mode, two pasture modes, and a beach mode? So there's five modes on it at the moment. Can you... No one's going to see that, are they? It's not clear. Yeah, yeah, can, yeah. That's that's right. Yeah, that's what I'm on about. Yeah. So that's it was in the right. wrong order, but we've got 2. two we've got two field modes. Is that right? That's correct. The ones with the yeah. trees on. Right. Now, can I park ask mode. you, park modes? What are the difference between them? Because last week when I was out and about, I had park mode one on, and everything seemed to be quiet. Really, really quiet. So I turned it back into Park 2 mode and everything was a lot more. I could hear better. I felt like I could use the machine better. I could handle it. I understood it better. But what's the difference between Park 1 and Park 2? And why Why is park that difference one, there? Park 1 slightly deeper um, with a slower recovery speed. Um, park 2 is not quite as deep, but with a faster recovery mode. That makes I'm with you. So, so basically, the, the the signals that I was getting that were quiet was because it was deeper. It could be a lot of things. Um, I mean, I went out. I I went out oh, when the update first was launched. Updated the machine just after lockdown. The, was it a Wednesday after lockdown? We were allowed out in the UK. I think it was. I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah, I literally went out that day with one of my mates with the Simplex, with the software settings, and it was dry. The ground in Essex where I live was like, it was like the Sahara says it, it was rock hard. I went on a bit of land, um, which was out of the way of the public and uh, away from the road, because even though we were allowed out after, lo after lockdown, I didn't want anyone sort of shouting at me and swearing at me and stuff. Um, even though I was allowed. And I went over an area probably 200 foot by 100 foot, which I've been over with the Simplex before and also another product similar, slightly more expensive in price. And I found probably 11 or 12 fines within two hours, which I was in part mode one. So I was pretty impressed from then uh, that it, it's definitely improved. Um, and this, this is like a test area, which I quite often use for machines. Um, and I found a hammered, believe it or not. Um, I think I put it on my Instagram account. Um, I put the hammered on there. I found musket balls, found a bit of sort of uh, Victorian jewellery. Uh, what else did I find? A uh, uh, lot of lead. But it's... Park mode one for me, I liked. I did find a slight altercation with park mode one and two. Um, park mode one, which gives you extra depth. Um, I had a hammer. I've got a test bed and there's a hammer in there. And the hammer was, I think, two inches under the soil. And park mode one just about picked it up. But park mode two, which is, uh, managed to, to get it spot on with the ID. So... This, this, it, again, it depends on soil conditions and if you know how that, that are, sounds but. exactly the same as the issue that I mentioned. Park mode right. one wasn't getting it right, yet park mode two was getting it straight away. Is it that because it's, you're looking yeah. deeper, the machine will bypass it? Yeah, possibly. It's is a lot of uh, reasons why, and I think Dillet did mention it on YouTube or one of her channels uh, the other day or the other week. But, again, it depends on the ground conditions and the ground balance. But I did find that slightly bizarre because I went over it with quite a few of my other machines and it wasn't a problem at all. But, yet yeah, the other machines didn't get the hammered at the depth, which the Simplex did, apart from uh, something a lot more that cost a lot more money. Mm. 
I, I watched, um, as I said, I've been out twice with it. Unfortunately, my wife's at work, so I'm not able to go out because I've got young in here. Um, and I watched this. I've not watched any videos. I felt that it, because it was the simplex, and I wanted to do it on my own, given my background in the, the metal detecting and not knowing things, and it being a and being the simple machine, I wanted to go out with it and do my own thing before I started watching any videos. Excuse me, I'm going to burp probably in a minute. Sorry. Um, I, I watched Sid Perry's video about the simplex for beginners this morning, and I learned so much from that short video. Yeah, really good video, that is. So, so, and obviously there's a lot of other people. You might have done one yourself, I'm not sure, Adrian, but there's a lot of people doing videos. And for those of you who... I've got a new machine uh, who don't understand it properly. Look on YouTube, the likes of Sid Perry and other settings. Luke's done one in the past for the Reuters Alta 71. They are fantastic. You know, I've learned more. I've been out with it. I thought I was doing things. I, I must admit, straight up, the ground balancing with 90, I actually thought that was, uh, discri- you know, the discrimination where you turn it down to stop the... Um, all the noises and what have you. I thought that was that for the first time I went out. It's only watching Sid's video today that I realised you press down and it's the thing on your left. I thought one of them was the battery power for the machine and the other one was the battery power for the earphones. <laughs> so I've got it all sussed now. And, and you know, the likes of that, I'm going to make mistakes. I, I ain't no expert at this and there's a lot of other people who aren't. But if you mm. are going to buy me, uh, two friends of mine have bought a Simplex. Hello, if you're listening, Nate and Jim. Um, They've got ordered their simplexes uh, today, so I've I've automatically sent them Sid's video because I thought basically all you need's in that video that, that that what you need to know, and it's only a short video. So kudos for Sid to that, and thank you. And uh, obviously, I, I can't wait to get out now because I know what to do with the machine. But that's the basics. Sid's video is the basics. It's told me the yeah. basics. When you yeah. say you can go deeper and alter things more and be more uh, expi- be more like the experienced metal detectorists who like to play with settings. How on earth do you do that on the simplex? Well, for a start, the simplex has got an extra sensitivity setting now, which naturally will give you more depth. It, it goes from 6 to 7. Um, a bit like spinal tap going from 10 to 11. <laughs> um, but, and it does get noisy, don't get me wrong. Um, it, it gets a bit chattery uh, when you use 7. Um, but if you can get away with it, uh, you definitely do get more depth. I mean, I I was detecting in dry ground here last weekend, uh, really dry ground, and it, it was getting down a good six inches, which is quite impressive, really. Um and of course, it's waterproof as well, which is nice, especially when on a hot day detecting in a stream. Uh, and if like me, I, I have <clears throat> my buddy I detect with James. Um, I quite often have a few incidents, a bit um, prone to accidents. Quite often fall in ditches and holes. Uh, I got dropped. I fell in a badger hole last year, which was about <laughs> four foot deep. Um, it was quite scary. Um, it was a uh, a badger pound and I was detecting over the top and I thought oh ground feels soft and I jumped like an idiot thinking why is it soft and I went down about four foot um, but it trapped my legs but I managed to crawl out uh, and in the beginning of this year I got stuck in a mud um, sinking mud as well <laughs> and lost the welly um, and so and my mate thought I was waving at him I found something but I was actually sinking uh, that was quite scary so uh, the simplex is quite handy for, for me if I'm going in the stream. And the other thing I like about it as well, typical English weather, we go out detecting and, you know, we have our protective covers on our machines, you know. Um, I quite often take mine off because I, I I struggle um, with the sun reflecting on it. I think Tony Kaywood did a video yesterday on YouTube with his routers and I, I think I know he said on there you can't see it through the perspex. And there's nothing worse when you're in the middle of the field sort of, half hour away from your car or something it starts raining you haven't got a cover on your machine um whereas with the simplex you just don't have to worry about it you know it's, it's, I, I did a review last year on the simplex in treasure hunting magazine um and the first thing i did like an idiot it said it was ip68 um and i work in manufacturing so when people say ip68 i'm always dubious because 
um, a lot of our friends overseas um, produce products that say they are IP68 waterproof, but they're not. Yeah. They're not certified. So the first thing I did with the Simplex um, when I got it, I threw it in a lake, um, literally turned it on and threw it in a lake with my daughter. She was with me. Oh, you threw your daughter. daughter in as well? Uh, afterwards to get it, yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, I timed it on my watch uh, half an hour because I think that's what they said. I think it's three metres or no, it might be 10 metres, uh, they say it is. I left it in there for half an hour. Uh, a couple of people looking at me a bit weird because someone saw me throw it in. Uh, and I got it out and turned it off, turned it on and carried on detecting. And I've been using it ever since. And I've Brilliant. since been out and having work. So, you know, it, it's nice to see that. Um, so to, to yeah. use it in, in, the, uh, in water, I take it you turn it over to the, the beach mode? I've actually used it in the... Um, I have used it in the beach mode, and I have used it on the beach a few times, um, which it's, it, it depends. It's quite a difference between wet sand and dry sand, naturally, but um, I've used it in dry sand mainly, and it's been fairly usable. Obviously, I live in Essex, so it's just full of light um, stiletto hills and blakies and sort of needles, really, so there's not a lot, not a lot to find in the best beaches in Essex. But... Um, <laughs> It's, especially South End, where everyone's been the last few weeks. So yeah, it's it's not too bad on there. Um, I have used it on Park Mode as well in a stream uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, didn't find much, but yeah, yeah. Not too bad. But to do the outside, got a, sorry, uh, I'll just go through these, and then we'll talk about doing the update. We've got a few comments in the uh, <clears throat> in the messages. Huntress Kimmy uh, from mm -hmm. Dirt Diggers UK says she loves the Simplex. Uh, she loves the update, especially with the uh, the mute button. As mm. I found it myself, uh, I've got a uh, Detechnics, I think it is, pinpointer, and it was just going absolutely wild. So that mute mode will be invaluable because if you're like me, when you're digging out the hole uh, with your pinpointer and your, your little trowel, that's when the concentration peaks for myself. So with mm. that noise and what have you going on behind you, it's there. Can't be doing with it. So that mute node's got to be invaluable for the likes of me. Uh, good evening to uh, Julian Evan Hart, who's listening, watching, listening. I'm, I'm still in podcast mode. Uh, Hi, Julian. Where are we, you else? Uh, Paula Pearson says, how do you get hold of one? In the UK, your best bet is to look on leisure promotions, uh, and all will be sorted on there. Uh, Gareth Howard says he took his Simplex out for the first time at the weekend. He found nothing but foil and aluminium. But it was good to learn some numbers. Foil were coming up constantly at 40 okay. to 16 and aluminium yeah. 69 to 72. Uh, evening, John Cooper. Uh, Scott Holden, good evening to yourself. Phil Hardy said Sid's video is the best for starters. I do it at this point, so or I'll, I'll get lost. <laughs> so uh, where are we up to? Um, the first day out with the Simplex, this is Hunter's Kimmy again. They uh, got a solid... 25 hammered coins on a ploughed field. Wow. Um, question from Kimmy. I want to try the simplex in seawater, not river water. I've seen a lot of vids in the rivers, but not the sea. Should I be worried about it? Salt water. No, I wouldn't think. I mean, I don't work for Noctomacro. I'm not sponsored by Noctomacro at all. I just like telling people about good machines. But um, I would say with a plastic shaft, uh, I can't see any issues, and there's, there's no metal on it, so the risk of uh, oxidisation is pretty low. I'd say the only area, if you were su to submerse it, is the speaker section. Um, there's like a sort of uh, metallic area in there, but um, I have detected up to about two foot um, in the sea with the simplex. And to be fair, I did find the shaft, uh, sorry, going back to the shaft again, Dave, um, because I, I like a long shaft, um, it was wobbling a bit with the current. Um, but yeah, no, I've, I've been two or three times in the sea. Uh, come back, it, it's what it's salty, uh, but obviously I used it in beach mode with very low sensitivity. But like I said, where I live in Essex, it's just full of trash in the beaches at the moment. Yeah. Um, where else are we? Uh, Sid Perry's here. Good evening, Sid. 
Uh, Sid, I've just mentioned about your video, uh, which I watched this morning, which was invaluable, and it's uh, you 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 done it so well, Sid. It was so easy to understand. I've been playing with my simplex today. I haven't been out with it, but I've been playing with the settings, and I wouldn't have known what was what if it wasn't for watching that. Um, I was waiting for your cat to go off on one of the signals as well, but it didn't. <laughs> uh, what else have we got? Uh, Nick West says, thank you to everybody who was part of these raffle last night, which um, raised £70 for veterans. Um Metal detecting land and water said just rinse it off with fresh water afterwards. <laughs> and uh, Rob Randall says he found half a horseshoe last week with the simplex. Do I win a hat? Not from me, Rob. I haven't got any. Well, got one. So uh, we, I've got some images as well that you've sent over. Uh, so again, if we, we share the oh, screen, well Luke. Uh, oh. The. We've got the Nocta Macro one. There, no, sorry, yeah, the Nocta Macro ones, simplex ones, and then we've got uh, another file that we might look at later. If that's okay. So, uh, where are we? Am I sharing the screen yet? Share the screen. Share the screen. Wait for the screen to share. There we are. It's all running smoothly tonight. So, tell me about this little beautiful thing. That was my. Uh, third most favourite fight. I've, I've got a lot of machines, so um, I'm quite fortunate. When I go out, I pick a machine that I feel like I want to do that day. So if I want to go out for just a short bit of detecting, and I, I just want to pick it up. Like if I'm visiting the customer through work, and I'm stopping off somewhere, I'll take the simplex because it's small and compact. I found that, and that's quite exciting for me because that was found uh, about half a mile from my house. And I've managed to trace that back to the Irish Fusilier Regiment, I think, um, and in the First World War, who lived where I live. And he basically, he was Irish, lived in Essex, went back to his family in Ireland and signed up for the Irish Regiment in the First World War, came back to live in Bado, then went off to fight and came back on leave. Then when he went back, he was killed. Um, and that was that was found on a grassy bank, uh, not far from my house. And I don't know if he went there for a, uh, with his girlfriend, or he went there for a walk and he lost it. But that was probably found a month before he died. So I've managed to track that back. So that means a lot to me. That I think it is Irish regiment. I'm sure it is. Yeah, Irish fusiliers is name. I can't that, that is a but... fantastic tale, especially that you've been able to trace it to the point. Yeah. That... He might have been the person who lived in your house. Might be as important. That's uh, that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, my house isn't that old, unfortunately. But it, it's um, yeah, it was it's First World War because my house. Uh, oh, I, sorry, not your house, but your area that you live. Yeah, I, I found right, out. Sorry. Um, I wrote an article last month. No, this month. No, last month in Treasure Hunting Magazine on detecting in a garden, and I found um, some really. It, I was so bored, Dave. I was desperate to get out so uh, the housing manager told me to go into the garden with the machine in which I did and uh, I detected my front and back garden and um, I found some bits and I found some 303 shells and I spoke to my neighbour and he said oh well our houses are built on a World War One camp it's like really and he said yeah so that guy who lost that cat badge was obviously um, camped on this site possibly and went for a walk or sat down for a cigarette so, yeah, learn a lot about things. Madness. Beautiful little find. Hey, Shep with his ball. Yeah, my dog. Just when you're gone yeah, detecting. Yeah, that's actually a Equinox there, but I don't know how that got in there. Oh, dogs right, yeah. Like dogs. Like, <laughs> just put him in it. Yeah, that's... Uh, a lovely collection there. Yeah, that... Um, I need to know more about that bell, actually. Someone messaged me on Instagram. They've got a bell exactly the same. Um, I don't know if it's modern, but... Uh, yeah, I've got um, a little case there, which I think some match case or something. Victorian got a lovely crotal bell, symbol. Uh, all those were found within two days over a weekend um, with the Simplex, um, which I was quite pleased with. I like that. Well, you've got a, quite a selection, I mean... I've never had a Crotal Bell. I've, um, Haven't you? Oh. Th no, no, no. O oddly. Uh, that, um, the bell's beautiful. 
Absolutely yeah, it's got stunning. some nice engraving on or marks it. Has, on yeah. It, yeah. So, I yeah, love finding and, and the hammered. Mm, the hammered coin's lovely. Yeah, that's my favourite at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Henry the Eighth. Is this one yeah. a? Is this one a bullet? Yeah, that's off. Uh, um, it's not an Enfield three hundred three. Uh, I can't remember what it is. Jules will know. But I like finding <laughs> symbols. I like finding symbols because um, I don't know. You you feel someone's worn that and done their job and. Yeah. The minute you dig that out of the ground and put your finger in it, you think, Christ, your last time someone touched that was God knows how long. So I like finding the symbols. And what's this below it? That's a cap it... badge. That's uh, ah, right. another mili- military cap. Uh, no, no, that one is... Um, it's... No, I've found that. Yeah, that that... I can't remember, but I've traced it. It's not. Um, it's like fire brigade or something like that. Right uh, around nineteen thirty. <clears throat> right, yeah. beautiful. Moving on. Uh, yeah. aha, you've got one of them cars, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, detector porn. Um, that's um, uh, that, that is detector porn. I'm it salivating. Is. I get excited about that. We should put a warning on that. Yeah, that's a typical <laughs> weekend for me going out. Um, I've got a golden mask in there, Ruta, Seascope. Is that a Seascope? Yeah, Equinox, CS6, yes, uh, Equinox in there. Um, there's a lot of machines. So I like to take my pick and see what machine reads on what mm. signals and stuff. It makes That's me wonder, actually, Seascope. I haven't heard much from them at the moment. Yeah, just lined up, ready to go. Is this a bug seal? Papa, Papa, what, sorry? Uh, Papa Buller. Papa Buller. Right, sorry. Yeah. That, that was found with the Simplex uh, about two months ago. Uh, I that's haven't got the reverse of that, I don't think. But, yeah, yeah. that's amazing, that is. Um, it's not excellent condition, but quite nice. I shared that with yeah. Jules and he uh, updated me on it. Yeah, that was found with the Simplex. It's funny, isn't it? It's not until you look at these yourself on a different angle, I realise they've been quite successful with the Simplex. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's take that down a bit. So, yeah, that lovely armor. Yeah, yeah, that was found. Um, that was. Uh, yeah, I can't remember actually. I should always try and get a background in because hold it in my hand. I can't remember when I. Yeah. Lovely. And this is the oh. uh, the updates. Yeah. In fact, while we're at this point now, should we talk about how the updates happen? Because obviously we can see it's plugged in and you can give us a walkthrough from this point. Yeah. Um, it's really simple. Um, it's literally, when you buy a Simplex, you, you get your, your coil connection and you get another connection. Uh, in, in, in the box, when you buy the machine, you'll get a, I don't know, a 10 inch extra lead. Um, you plug one end, take a little rubber cap off, plug it into the Simplex, connect it via your, to your computer via USB, um, go to the Nocta Macro website, click on uh, Simplex, click downloads or updates, takes you to a page, gives you simple instructions. You download a file, um, check your antivirus software doesn't block it, because sometimes they do. Uh, open up the file, a little application opens up on your screen, and it's got different tabs on it. So it will say Amphibio, um, all the not machines. Click on Simplex. Click Connect Detector. Connect the detector. It says Download Update. Update Machine. Wait about a minute. It updates the machine. Job done. Simple as that. Is that simple? Very, very simple. Yeah. Very, very and quick simple. as well. Yeah, it's quick. I Less think than I think a five minute minutes, job. Five minutes, yeah. The yeah, only brilliant. downside, sorry, Dave. No, 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 I was, you carry on. The only downside is if you um, have an Apple Mac, um, which I think only 10% of the population do, uh, I do, unfortunately, um, the software doesn't work on Apple Mac. So the only right. way you're able to update your machine is either take it around a friend's house or do it at work like I did. <laughs> <laughs> with a hell of a lot of beeping going on in my lunch break but it, it, it gets people interested um, 
it's good taking a detector to work. There should be a take your detector to work day because a lot of people, uh, you never get anyone who says, oh, you geek, you idiot. It's always like, oh, oh, I've always wondered about doing that. Um, and through that, people in my work are starting to look at getting a machine. So, yeah, I updated it. But the departments very, very... I work, the... very oh. simple, yeah. The departments I work uh, work at in a well-known British company, uh, I'm not saying I'm the person who started the trend, but I'm the person who started the trend, I think, because there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think there's nine people in my department now who've, who've started metal detecting. One I went out with last week, uh, who I didn't even know until I put something on Facebook and he commented to it. So, uh, yeah, take mm. it. Be some beeping in my place, I tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, more porn. it's a hobby which a lot of people want to get involved in, but it, I don't know if it's the technicalities because back in the 70s and 80s, machines weren't that user friendly. Um, oh. Had about 12 PP9 batteries that lasted like 10 minutes. Um, yeah. Whereas things are moved on. Uh, I think a lot more people, I've, I've, I've been talking to the younger people that are interested more which is nice to hear um so hopefully it will grow but it's, it's not the sort of thing that appears on national television either or, or radio so unless you walk into a news agency a magazine or google it it doesn't really shout out hopefully going forward it will it'll increase i know it's, it's popular now more than it has been for a long time do you know my OCD kicked in looking at this picture, Adrian? All your wires are rotated the same direction on every one of them, which is good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, that's uh, Vanquish, Equinox 800, Brutus, and Simplex, I think. What do you yeah. think of the Vanquish? Obviously, because the COVID-19 kicked in around the time that it was uh, released, have you had much much time using that? Yeah, yeah. I, I was fortunate to get the Vanquish quite early, uh, the five forty. Um, I like it a lot. the The benefit it has over the Simplex is it's multi IQ, um, yeah. so it potentially will pick up more signals than the Simplex. But I don't know. I'm, it's almost like driving an automatic and a manual. It, I can't. The Vanquish is an automatic. So it does it does the job, it does it well, and it does it nicely. But the Simplex is a bit more like a manual car. Do you get what? It's, it's a funny one. I do like the tones on the Vanquish. Um, Mind Lab tones are really, really nice. I actually won a competition last week with Mind Lab. I was global nice. winner. Global winner. I won out of everyone in the world on their Mind Lab Olympic. And what, did you win? What, was, what did you use to win and what did you win? Uh, it was a photograph of your finds. So I just put a load together in the garden, cleared the dog's muck out of the way and took a photo, um, applied a filter, uploaded it to the Olympic site just to see how it would go. And they sent me an email, said, you're global winner out of everyone in the world. And they put all these countries and people underneath who, who'd come under me, so like Ukraine, Romania, Australia, Kazakhstan, and States. I was so excited. I thought, I'm going to get a CTX. I'm going to get a CTX through the post. And it arrived yesterday. What was it? A hat and a, a scarf. <laughs> so, Brilliant. Yeah. It's a nice hat, but, yeah, it's all, everyone's a winner. <laughs> now this is like a lovely little buckle. I love buckles. Yeah, yeah. something about yeah. them and it's so special. J Jules What's Lisa's that? got. Now that is a bullet that's hit something. Really? Yeah, I love. Oh, that. Yeah, you can see the. Uh, is it one of yeah. the, um, the, the 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 ones after musket balls with the yes. two rings around them? Yeah. Yeah, there's a permission I detect on uh, in Essex. Um, near a power station and it was used um, for a lot of military training um, about 100 years ago and I've actually got it's before the Royal Navy was called Royal Navy um, I can trace some of those bullets back so it was called I can't remember what it was called it was called like the British Sea 
army or something like that. Um, yeah. Someone who knows about bullets. But yeah, I, I find a lot of those bullets this, uh, near where we are. Oh, you try to hit the simplex. Uh, is that a that's, button? I love that. Yeah, you can't probably see it very well, but it's a beautiful button that's got really nice decoration around the side. So I'm better. Lovely. Isn't that lovely? Do you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've got something not dissimilar to that. I'm pretty sure. In fact, I'm very sure. I can't lay my hands on it at the moment, but if I remember, I'll find that. It looks like it's got some uh, markings on it. I don't know if that's uh, just scuff marks, but mm. but these, uh, yeah, fantastic design. Yeah, I'm 100% I mean, quite, sure I've got something the same. Imagine making that today. so intricate. Mm. Where are we? Is that it? No, just a couple more. This was the lake you threw it in, I take it. Yes, that's right. Yeah, that's the lake. That was last year. Yeah, so uh, detected in oh, the this lake. Is another... That's a munitions badge for the First World War. I love that. Um, that was Lovely. awarded to women who helped the war effort in the First World War. They're all awarded. Is, that a... uh... is it a bullet with wings on? Yeah, cool, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That'd be a nice tattoo. Yeah, it's a bullet with it wings would, on actually, it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so <laughs> seems to be a bit wet there, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bit, a little bit moist. I didn't even check that if I tightened up all the uh, coil and everything on it prior to that, yeah. but I did. It did have bubbles come out of it when I threw it in. So if anyone does drop theirs in the sea or a lake, it comes from the uh, armrest and the shaft. It's not from the control box. So the the new update, the latest update yesterday. Uh, actually, we're going to have to stop now. I'll ask you in a minute. Uh, because I've been on there, I've forgot about the adverts. I lost track of time. So, short break, Adrian. We'll be back momentarily. Yeah. No worries. I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Thank you, Luke. Sorry, I was a little bit late there, Luke. Uh, obviously, sharing the images, I uh, lost track of time. So, uh, going into the comments again, a little bit. Where were we up to? Let me have a look. Well, as said, so Sid had just come along, and we will be around about... Not there. 
Not there. Uh, Sid says, yeah, the Simplex is a very capable machine and worth every penny. Loads of machine for the money. Uh, Leighton Jones, my pal from work, uh, he said, great video, Sid. I sent him that this morning to watch so he uh, could um, have an idea before he gets it tomorrow. Uh, and he's out this weekend with our other work pal or former work pal, Nathan. Uh, Chris Cottrell, again, says the Simplex is great value for money. Uh John Clayton says, will you be able to use the new shaft at the top instead of the lower stem? No, I think it's the lower stem. Right, yeah. Um, Gareth Howard says, my Simplex didn't come with a charger plug, just charging wires. Should it have come with a plug? I'd say no, because I think plugs are ten a penny these days. We've all got them. Did yours come with a plug? My, I got an early one. Uh, right. So it was a bit hodgepodge, but I mean, you just plug it in USB, can't you? So, uh, John Cooper asks, are all dealers supplying the rubber washer upgrade for the Simplex for free? I would suggest maybe question. something we'd have to look at. Uh, I did notice somebody else comment a little bit down, so I will have a look for that. Steely Dan, uh, I wish I knew how to upgrade my Simplex Plus. He only has a smartphone. Can you do it that way? No. No, no. Okay. Go uh, to your local... I can't go anywhere, can you? I was going to say go to your local library and do it. But... Go around <clears> someone <throat> else's house. You're allowed in now. Yeah. Uh, James Newman says he gets a crow bell every week he goes out. Yeah, he bloody does. <laughs> He's the mate I detect with. And a hammered. Uh, Annie Biard, archaeologist, she says it's a lovely bell, looks the 18th century maybe. Uh, Jeff Barcher says, yes, the washer is free, but you may have to pay for postage. Uh, John Cooper, you will need to give proof of purchase for the Simplex. I'll pre-sorted mine this afternoon. will be sending me one free when they get them from Nocta. So there's that answer. Uh, Sid Perry asks, does anyone know when the Simplex coils are being released, Adrian? I think it's it, it. I think it's next month. They're in testing at the moment. I think it's next month. Yeah, it should give the corona, impression it's got to be sooner rather than later. Yeah, I think because coronavirus, it's, it's delayed everything for everyone. Uh, Nick West says the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers cap badge. I was right then. Yeah, <laughs> Irish Royal Inniskilling Ireland, and it. Yeah, that's what. That's correct. Thank you for that. I'll. Really look at that again tonight, yeah. Oh, well, clever man. James Newman asks, Adrian, can I have your Equinox 800 as you have too many machines? No. Neil Anthony Walmsley said, Sid, looking forward to your next video, mate. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed that one this morning. I actually muted, um, what's the program? Shed and Buried, just to uh, to watch that this morning, which is unheard of. <laughs> uh Rob Random says, remember to unzip the download file before trying to use it. Yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Let me see any more. Uh, South Coast Detecting, Aaron Weedle. I'm enjoying the Simplex more than the Vanquish, if I'm honest. Mm. Uh, yeah, everyone else says about the uh, the plug they haven't come with them, and they've just used it uh, with what they've got already. Just to uh, clear that up, it's, it's not actually a plug as in a plug plug, it's similar to the lead from the coil, Yeah, but it just has a USB connection on it. Mm. So it's not a plug as such. Uh, Aaron's had a three-ringer bullet this morning on the beach. Nice. God, been, we're having a lot of comments tonight. Where are we up to now? Got They're all rude, up, though, Dave, just... aren't they? They're all having a no, no, room. not at all. Not at all. <laughs> Well, there's one. Tony K would say, <laughs> "Get a shave," <laughs> and he means he you, not me. Has he written that book on buttons yet, Tony? <laughs> He's PC now. PC <laughs> now. Anyway, pixelated K would. Yeah, on dial up. <laughs> James said, "Could we do an advert for Adrian's Wellington boots, sponsored by Cozy Feet?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just got some new boots. Uh, Gareth says he hasn't got an update yet, but watched Aaron's vid and GB in beach mode and flicked 
back into port mode and it was finding tiny pieces of aluminium 12 inches deep and more. Uh, John Clayton won his on a raffle. Uh, Rod West says on dry sand, what mode works best? I, I, I ran it on beach mode and I was uh, able to get a quite uh, four or five sensitivity. Uh, Artyokov Roman says something in Russian which I can't read, but it's there anyway, and I wanted to give him a shout out. <laughs> Uh, that that's about it for live comments at the moment. Anyway, we'll obviously go back to them uh, even when there are any more uh, coming. Uh, anyway, where were we up to? Thing, anyway, well, I was going to drop in Dig Adventures actually, Dave. Not that drop we're promoting what, them. Dig Adventures. You're on the archaeology. I'm me, yeah. you, and Tony Kaywood. We are. Yeah, a, it's a really good um, course, um, which. Uh, we're doing at the moment, and it you're is. doing it as well, aren't you? I am, yeah. Um, so for those it, not listening, Dig Ventures are a private entity, uh, the private archaeological company, who run their own digs and whatnot, and they've put together multiple courses, stuff that you can go and join them in the likes of Linda's Farm. But for this particular course, they've made available for free for, ha-ha, caught you, during the, uh, the lockdown. And um, the course started, the six-week course, course started this week, and uh, it's fascinating. I've, I've learned so much already. I mean, I've done uh, archaeology. I've been I've been a, a member of an archaeological team, a uh, field team, back in the early 2000s, and uh, it was absolutely fantastic being a part of that. I've actually got a picture on the wall beside me, which you won't be able to see, because uh, and I don't know why that's not working either. I'm not trying to download things. I'm opening. Uh so the course we started this week, it's a six-week course. It's It was free. I'm not sure if it's available now. Uh, I'd like to say it is, but somebody did say it stopped on the first. So that's the one. Virtual Field School. Uh, so, oh, it's still available by the looks of it. So, uh, Luke, Ooh. I'm going to share the screen so people can see what I'm talking about. Uh, oh, yeah, you had it. But I'm going to show the actual uh, course itself that myself, Tony Kaywood, and um, Adrian are currently doing. So you get uh, it comes in batches of six. Here we go. And uh, this is the course How to Do Archaeology. Uh, so it, it's fantastic. Six weeks, we get uh, a new thing. You have to watch videos, you have to read things, you're learning core skills. You can do it, as you can see now, on your laptop, on your tablet, on your uh, mobile. And uh, it's endorsed by the Chartered Institute of Archaeologists and based on the Archaeology Skills Passport. There's so much going on already. in the, So, Chapter 1, First Steps. Chapter 2, Stratigraphy Starter. Chapter 3, In Context. Chapter 4, Section Perfection. Chapter 5, Fabulous Finds, and Chapter 6, Are You Ready? And at the end of each each um, each week, each chapter, there's a quiz as well uh, for obviously you have to finish the quiz to be able to go on to the next week. And uh, what are your thoughts up to now, Adrian? I thought, um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I saw it on lockdown when uh, I was on furlough and I thought, ooh, that looks interesting, and it was free. And you actually come away with a qualification, I think you'll find, Dave, which yes, is uh, yes. endorsed by the archaeology sort of people. The so, Institute for Archaeology, yeah. Yeah, so um, it's really simple and really easy. Uh, I literally do it when I go to bed at night. I just put it on and read it and watch the videos and do the things. I haven't dug my pit yet in the garden, which they get onto. Have you dug yours yet? Sadly, I'm fully paved. Oh, God. She, she'd have a problem with me pulling up the bags. <laughs> Two next doors. Um, but okay. if, I st if I stand up, I'll just pull this off the wall. I like my memories. And uh, if you can see that, there you go. That's uh, nice. my, my feet and the chap called Steve Parsons, uh, who I was with. Now, this was for the Celtic Warrington project that we were involved in a dig, and this was in... Slenarmon in Yal between Rhythin and Mould in North Wales. And uh, that, 
uh, turned out to be uh, part of a Roman road. Uh, just behind it, very, very nice story about <coughs> one of my friends, Dobby, uh, still laughs about it. There was a, <coughs> a rectangular, like a, a slate basin that we, we found. And I'm trying to jiggle some stones and uh, I jiggled a bit too much. And when I say flooded the entire area, I flooded the entire area. And it turns out that it was actually um, the lost well of St. Garmin. <laughs> so I inadvertently using a crowbar turned something nice into a, a massive flooded site that turned into be a holy well. <laughs> so uh, that, that was, that was on that site. That was uh, honest to God. I've, I've, ne I've, I've never been so um, relaxed as when I'm lying over a pit, scraping away and brushing away softly. And oh, it was absolutely fantastic. And, mm -hmm. and this, course takes me right back uh do you believe that you've learned anything that may benefit or that will benefit in the future metal detecting yeah and and, and i think if you uh if anyone tonight watching goes on to their website uh dig dig ventures um they'll realize there's a lot of metal detectorists who are signing up to the course because they encourage you to go on their facebook page and say um, I'm an idiot. I've just dug a four foot hole in my garden. Look, my neighbours are looking at me, which is part of the course towards the end. Um, I mean, they, they are writing an article for Treasure Hunting magazine um, on their course and information about it. So uh, next month, I think uh, it will all be in there about what they do and, and how people have got on with the course. So it's definitely a good thing to look at. I'm just, uh, I'm just going on to... Luke's YouTube. I'm just sharing the link. So I've just shared the link in the YouTube. That should come up in the bottom of the live comments any minute, but uh, I've put the link in there anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Tony and the uh, Tony K Wood in the comments. Uh, what are your thoughts up to now? Uh, John Cooper says he's doing it as well, and it's very interesting. Tony, what are your thoughts on it? We'll, we'll I'll come back to you when you've put something up. Uh, Nick West says, Adrian, come and join us at Metal Detective War Relics, and it is a fantastic little Facebook group. I am going to join that. Thank you very much. I love it. It really is. I, I join. War. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, the program we've done for VE Day, myself and um, Julian, some of the finds that were included on that show, absolutely fascinating. Some beautiful mm. things. Obviously, uh, he brought out his uh, propellers and whatnot, but there was really? some absolutely yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, the penny aeroplanes, I, did, I didn't know about penny aeroplanes, and with mm. Julian's help, I actually put together, constructed an article from what I'd learned using his how-to models that he put on Facebook, and uh, absolutely yeah. fascinating, brilliant. Yeah, I love so, anything. Yeah. Uh, bizarrely, um, that Mind Lab competition that I won, somebody won it um, in Belgium. And they messaged me on Facebook and said, have you received your prize yet? And I said, no. And he said, oh, um, I specialise in metal detecting World War II relics. I've got permission on a beach near me. And he showed me all the stuff he'd found. Uh, and it was amazing. Um, and I'm now friends with him on Facebook. But, yeah, really, I love anything World War II. It's I'll share we grew up with it. Yeah, I'll share an article. I'll, I'll put the article on uh, Nick West's group as well. But I'll share an article to you at some point that we've got published on the magazine website uh, yeah. by a Greek chap. Uh, and he, he lives on the border of, I can't remember what war it was or what skirmish in Greece. And some of the finds that he sent the images to myself, absolutely phenomenal, Un unbelievable. So I'll send that over. And uh, yeah. John Cl Cl Clayton says, Adrian, he's sent you a Facebook invite tonight and a private message. Yeah, I can't <coughs> leave it. Declined it, deleted it. It's disgusting. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I haven't looked at it yet. Uh, thank you very much. Um, um, I, suppose, I, I just want to, before we forget talking about things, the Simplex update uh, two point seven eight, which came out yesterday. I haven't covered that. Did you want me to quickly go over it? Was it two point seven eight or two point eight eight? I think it's seven eight. Oh, it might be two point eight eight. I think it's 7 8. Because she mentioned last week that she'd released the 2.78. You've got yesterday, to put it on now, aren't you? 
No, I'm sure it's 2.878. Someone will say, right. come on the chat. But all, all I'll say is, um, Dilek did say yesterday that if you're happy with your settings on 2.7, you can stay with 2.7. However, 2.7888, the latest one that's on the Not to Macro website, um, it, it adjusts the VDI reading, um, but it doesn't affect the depth. It doesn't affect the sensitivity. It, it's just purely it might affect the reading different to what you did have on 2.77. So, so to be fair, then, for someone like myself who's only just started using it, it's the perfect time to, to put – well, why not put the 2.88 on knowing that it's, yes, it's fully yeah. up to date? Yeah. You know, I, true, I don't true. really – I'm, I'm learning as a start anyway. There's not much else to learn. Yeah, true. But I know there's a lot of people concerned that this update reduces the depth. It doesn't at all. It's just a, mm. a slight tweak in the tones. Um, Are we simplexed up? Um, Fully up to date with simplex? Yes. Unless anyone's got any questions about the machine. Anyone ask any questions away in the uh, comments? In the meantime... Uh, you put somebody uh, in communication with myself and Luke called Scott Holden a couple of weeks ago. Now, hopefully Scott will be coming on in the com coming weeks to actually discuss the new venture himself with us. But uh, in the meantime, for people who don't know, because I'm sure he'd appreciate people knowing and, and going along and joining, can you tell us a little bit more about Scott Holden? And I think he said his brother's new uh, metal detecting venture. Yeah, um, I, I'm on Instagram. Um, don't ask me what marketing is, but I'm on Instagram and uh, quite cleverly pops up with things you're interested in. The thing came up called Detector Network. And I thought, oh, that looks interesting. Nice logo. So I clicked on it and it's a new website which is, is launched and live, but it's not fully live, as in they've not heavily promoted it on social media yet. But um, if you take a look at detectornetwork.com, it's a new platform for metal detectorists um, in an easy-to-use way, as opposed to some forums, which in the past I've struggled with. They're, they're very, they don't work on your mobile phone well. Uh, you can't do instant chat and stuff. So Detector Network um, is a new website that's been developed by two brothers. One of them is a software developer. Um, highly skilled, and the other one is a keen and avid metal detectorist who, like me, um, doesn't really enjoy going on Facebook too much. Uh, I, I've, I'm always dubious about if I have if I have a find that's of value. Like last year, I found a, a medieval gold ring, which is uh, with the flow, which is worth a lot of money. That goes on Facebook. There is potentially a risk of someone who I know. Uh, realising where I live, knowing I've got that ring in my house and they can break in and steal it. Plus, there's data issues, the way Facebook shares your data. A lot of people are concerned about that. And also, if you're like me and a few of my friends, you go on Facebook posting a find and within 15 minutes, you're in an argument over Donald Trump or uh, the latest um, uh, coronavirus risk of watching your television on Channel 4 at 10 o'clock. You're more likely to get it off and stupid. So it's purely for metal detectorists. Um, it's going to soon have an app for your phone, uh, which you are going to be able to do live chat with people on it, and also a unique feature of live streaming, which I know you can do it on Facebook, um, but if you don't want to go on Facebook, you don't want to go on any other sort of platform, you just want to talk about metal detecting, you want to create a page for your group, your metal detecting club. Uh, it's all free. There's no advert. Um, you can go on there. You can do a live stream if you're doing a dig. It will upload it to the page in real time. It will also save it and let it be in within your post. You can also download it at a later date. Um, LP are on there at the moment. The search is on there. Treasure Hunting Magazine are on there. There's people from all over the world. There's a guy on there called um, Dave Sudler. Dave, Dave Sadler. Um, he's on there. Fuck, fuck, Sorry. Like. Yeah, fat bloke in a small room. Um, <laughs> uh, and they're, they're encouraging people to sign up and they're quite passionate about the, their hobby, the hobby as a whole, which I am as well. Um, and 
I, I do like the way of just zoning out a bit, like I do with metal detecting. I sort of move away from all what's going on and what's going on in the world. And when I go detecting with my friend or buddies, we just talk metal detecting. All right, we might bring up the odd coronavirus, but Detector Network is a place where it is just all metal detecting. So um, I'd, I'd encourage people to go on there and have a look and sign up. It's all free. Um, it's going to have an app soon on your phone, which is quite unique because not many forums have an app. And if they do, they don't work very well. Um, yeah. And they're also launching a competition tomorrow. Anyone who signs up, I think we – I've bought one here to remind me. Um, either a copy of that, uh, Artifacts from Bennett, or Roman Artifacts, great books from greenlightpublishing.com. Um, and they, they are the Bible for metal detectorists. I, every time I've been out detecting – I'll come home, I'll look in there, and nine times out of ten, I'll find something relevant to one of my finds. Whether I remember it or not is another thing. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> hence tonight's photos. But yeah, detectornetwork.com. Uh, just put it in your browser and uh, have take a look, sign up, um, and give the guys a, a helping hand. Because anyone like Dave and Luke uh, on tonight's show... Um, they're not getting paid for it. They're doing it out of love in their heart. And to keep this hobby going and get people aware, I think the, as much support as possible, the better, really. Yeah, it seems It seems to me, as I said to you earlier before the show, it looks like a metal detectorist on Facebook. Uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, is, yeah. Some of it is. I've got a couple of issues at the moment that I can't, I, I, sussed out, I can't suss out to do a lot of things or where to find things, uh, but obviously that will come when I, I get the opportunity to look more. And as I said, one of the uh, developers, you're not sure if it's it's the actual uh, detectorist or the uh, the technical person, hopefully going to be coming on the show in the coming weeks to discuss net detector net a little bit more, detect the network a little bit more. Yeah, I think I think, I think they should. Um, Scott, uh, it's Scott, isn't it? Um, I think they should appear because it's, it's got the, if you're a club, it's a great place for a club because you can create group chats for club. So yeah. with current coronavirus, you can create your own club group chat and have a virtual yeah. meeting. And Which is obviously uh, private to yeah. non-people like I could go along and join in. Yeah, yeah. brilliant. And it uh, also has a section for um, selling stuff as well uh, and fines. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely give it a detector network a shout. I'm enjoying it anyway. Uh, we've got a couple of things coming in. So, Aaron Weedle, 2.77 is perfect for me. Totally mm. helped me to identify targets at depth. Still had yeah. a couple of bottle tops, but no ring pulls. Darren Booth asks, what is the slidy, sliding mounting looking thing on the back of the armrest for? Now, we discussed this last week, and uh, I think yeah. we well, discussed it somewhere, and basically it's potentially for something that's maybe coming in the future to go in there i think it's for a pinpointer holder right right but i don't know i'll have to try that give it a go mm. let us know mm. uh jet ski john i had john titchin wants to see a range of course the simplex 13 inch 15 and 6 dc detecting asks what relevance does the mineral mineral bar have to a signal I think it gives you a clear indication of the type of soil you're detecting in. So, um, whereas before you didn't have any, it, it's giving you more uh, detail of the ground you're detecting in, the mineralisation. So, what was the question? It was how would it... What relevance does the mineral bar have to a signal? Well, I suppose... It, it helps you with your ground balance more. I mean, I, I've not really looked at it, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I have noticed it does work, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't quite know how what relevance it gives. I don't know quite how to explain it. Well, I, on the uh, Sid's video that I said I watched this morning, he actually discusses the mineral bar. If it's up to halfway, all is cool, cool and groovy, uh, yeah, but obviously. if it starts to get higher, then it's time to to uh, balance, take your ground balance figures down, yeah. 
uh, until it stabilizes again. Uh, yeah. I think that's that's. I, I think, think I've actually just explained something for the first time hey, ever regarding metal detecting. You haven't got a simplex hat for nothing, have you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Woo-hoo, I'm an true. expert. It's, it's almost like a warning indicator, basically. So yeah. um, if, it, if it's up at the top, you, you know you've got an issue. So uh, yeah, ground balance. Uh, John Clayton, I am getting a lot of chatter on the beach, but I mess about with it and it's okay then. But I never remember what I did to it. I know they say when you turn it off in 277 upgrade, it remembers the last settings. Mm. But you need to rebalance the ground settings most times. It goes to 3 or 4 bar, but some people go on manual to 0.0 balance. Any ideas? 0.0. Now, I actually read this on a forum. Somebody puts it down to 0.0. To do the manual balance, uh, yeah, no, yes, the manual balance, and then he said it takes it up to about sixty, and everything's fine. And I was, I this confused me. I didn't realise that, as Sid says, leave it on ninety unless your mineralisation destabilises. Yeah, I, um, I think you start getting in at the end of the day. This is called the Nocta Macro Simplex. It's a simple machine, and I think. When you start getting into that level, um, I, I, it's, it's, yeah, it's an interesting one there. I found with turning it off and on, it does save my settings. The ground balance, um, I naturally leave it on 90. Um, very rarely I'll adjust it manually. I have on the tests uh, been playing with it, but with the recent dry ground, it's been pretty low reading. Fantastic. Uh, as I said, I wouldn't have been able to say that out loud. I wouldn't be able to think it if it wasn't for watching that video this morning. So uh, mm. I've actually learned something this week. I just need to go out and put it into practice. Um, as I said, the, the likes of the mineralization bar, I didn't even recognize that it was there. So it's nice to understand that a little bit better. Anyway, Have you done the update, Dave? No, no, not yet. I wanted to leave it until such time as somebody more learned than I told me how to do it properly, being you now. So you I will go, be doing that tomorrow. You can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with it. it Unless so I, I thankfully think, I haven't know, got a MacBook. No, no. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mine. Yeah. I, I think you know. <laughs> at the end of the day, it's a two hundred or three hundred say pound machine. Um, I wasn't expecting this level of updates for a beginner, and I don't know if the average beginner will be able to deal with all these updates, but for those who do, it's quite a nice feature from Not to Macro, um, mm. and hats off to them for doing so much, because, you know, five, five years ago, you buy a machine for that sort of money, you buy a machine, that's it. Um, now, you've got a company who are producing updates regularly on it, resolving any issues that customers are moaning about, which, you know, they're listening to their customers. And your customer at the end of the day is key because they're the ones who come back to you. Um, mm. Plus, they're bringing out a new shaft. Plus, they're bringing out extra coils. It, it, it's going to knock It's going to knock a few big players start thinking about their customers more. Mm. I, I personally think it's all good for us in the hobby. Absolutely. Uh, Gareth Howard said 0.0 is recommended manual ground balance for beaches according to the instruction manual. Mm, Yeah. I'll just stay on 90. I haven't sussed that bit out yet. I, I, like I said, I I try and keep clear of beaches um, (laughs) in ethics anyway. I I, Um, I hate, well, I'm hoping that I do, I was supposed to be going away last week to Anglesey, but for the world at the moment, and I took the simplex onto the beach and I would have liked to have seen what it was like because generally I despise if every other machine I've had, I've despised beach detecting. Not a fan it, at all. It's good. Um, I took the Vanquish recently on the beach, and that that, that performed really well. Um, the Simplex as well. I think with all the recent technology uh, and software updates on machines, they've they've got a lot lot better. I mean, yeah. for me personally, I find going into a field or a pasture or somewhere detecting it's me and a buddy just detecting beaches they're like magnets for nutters so every five minutes i get you found gold yet oh can i have a go and it's not <laughs> it's, it's not a relaxing hobby um 
So, uh, yeah. But on the other he, side of the coin, look how much Aaron Weedle, South Coast detecting, enjoys it. And, and yeah. he does. Yeah. I think yeah. he's, he's primarily does beach detecting and uh, he's had so much luck. Mm. Yeah. Even with, especially with the simplex lately, he loves it. He's crying well, at the moment. Uh, <laughs> he obviously doesn't live in Essex. <laughs> uh, so, to end the show, uh, you are Team Rutus UK uh, member. Yes. So, basically, yes. you've got the Rutus Alter 71, and mm -hmm. people obviously uh, come to you at events, which we haven't had, but would normally come to you at events for advice or to see and try the Rutus Salter 71. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, there's myself, Shane, Tony Kaywood's not in here, but there's, there's a group of us um, who have got together last year um, basically to advise people who are looking at buying a Rutus or uh, having issues with using it or want to know more about it, how the settings work. We're there to help people. Um, there's a website. Uh, Routers Expert Team or Team Routers .uk. Just Google Team Routers, and on that website, there's settings for people to download and put in their machines, which are specifically designed around finding hammers or stuff like that. Um, and it's it's a it's a very small company. Um, they're based in Poland. Uh, they do everything themselves: develop the software, create the circuit boards, injection molding, um, and I don't know, being British, we like the underdog and they're a very small company and I have had some very good results on my routers and I enjoy it a lot. So it's 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 my main machine to be fair. And if, if it wasn't for yeah, if it wasn't for yourself and Tony Kaywood, and uh, if you go on to the expert I uh, don't know which area it'd be on that at the moment looking at it. Just but in that area route, you've yeah. got you've got the um is it on there? You've got the settings for individual um, people like yourselves, settings, Tony Kaywood settings, uh, and, and several other people. And I struggled because it's to me was so um, so in depth. The seventy one different frequencies couldn't get me head around that. So if it wasn't for your own and um, Tony Kaywood settings, I probably wouldn't have found a thing. So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's a pr fantastic machine. Currently, obviously, I'm getting to grips with the simplex. So, uh, but I, I take it on every site with me. Last week, when I went out, me me buddy used the Rutus because he's uh, had to sell his AT Pro, uh, mm. and and he was finding things with the Rutus and he'd never used one before. I just left it in Tony Kaywood settings, and away he went. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, I've 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 had more success with that than any other machine. Um, mm. It might it's probably luck, but uh, I just enjoy the tones. I enjoy being able to tinker with it, play with it. Um, and, of course, they've got a new machine coming out this year, um, which is very, very exciting. Uh, as far as I'm aware, it's going to be the first metal detector with a colour screen, um, which, for the vet, for the price, um, which is going to it's going to have a colour screen. Uh, it's going to have Wi-Fi, not Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, it's going to have rechargeable NICAM, NICAD battery. Um, it's going to have lots of different features on it. It's fully yeah. foldable shaft. So, yeah, looking forward to that. Unfortunately, because of coronavirus, we can't have detectable, but I think it would have appeared at, uh, there. But there's lots yeah. there's lots of machines. The new Garrett machine, um, very much looking forward to getting my hands on that. Uh, C-Scope, uh, bringing out their Evo, um, but that's all gone a bit quiet. So I don't know if anyone's heard any more about that. I'm looking forward to that as well. Mm. Uh, Tony Kaywood, I, th I think I noticed you had some dates up for events where people could meet the uh, the team on there and the dates have uh, come and gone, so you might want to change them. Look at me being all OCD again. <laughs> so is uh, Alien... Uh, alien? That's a new one. Yeah. Adrian. No, Adrian the Alien. Some people, some people call me Alien. I've got to do that from now on. Alien. Uh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Adrian. Is there I've anything an else that you want? Got a long so have I. Like an alien. Oh. Uh, bust the blood vessel. Anything oh. else to add before, before we go? I met him. Sorry. Um, no, uh, just thanks ever so much, everyone, this evening. And uh, 
hats off to you and Luke for putting such a great show on. Really enjoy watching it and being on it. So thank you very much. Oh, much and, and not forgetting tomorrow, the new Treasure Hunting magazine's out um, with information on the Simplex Plus update. Mustn't forget that. Marvellous. Be looking forward to that. If I decide to go downtown and go into uh, if the shops that sells it is open, uh, well, I'm going to have to, to put the order in for it eventually. To be honest, Dave, well, I might have a word for you, but um, to be honest, um, with WH Smith and lots of shops shutting, loads of magazines, uh, lo sorry, loads of people are buying it direct from Tre uh, Greenlight Publishing, Treasure Hunting Magazine, which is the publishing company, and it comes with free postage. So rather than going into your shops and paying £4.10 and spending about four quid on fuel and risking your life, essentially, if you go on Treasure Hunting Mag Magazine website, you can subscribe uh, for the same price with free postage at the moment. Um, this month is a really good article in there about uh, Viking finds as well um, from a guy. Uh, and there's lots, lot, yeah, is that, I don't know if that's this month or, or not. But there's the, the auction roundup, a guy in Denmark who, who's talking about uh, some Viking finds, which is interesting. Uh, a uh, guy who found a rare coin in Wiltshire, which has rewritten the history books. And of course, you got the Sim uh, Simplex update and readers' finds as well, which everyone likes looking at readers' finds. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's in the shops. But visit treasurehunting.co.uk and you can subscribe with free delivery. Yeah, I think you're going to have to. Definitely. Mm. Well, Adrian, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, no, as, no, as thank ever. You. And. Um, you know, thank you for all the people who are watching tonight. Couldn't do the show without you because uh, there'd be no one there to do it to. <laughs> thank you to to Luke for obviously um, producing the you know everything fantastically. Everything really we nearly caught you again then, didn't we? Smoking. <laughs> I'm asthmatic. I'm asthmatic, Dave. <laughs> so that's not a vape. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. It's all breaking up. <laughs> Adrian, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on tonight, and hopefully, no worries, uh, I, I've learnt a lot, and I'm hoping that some of the uh, people who are watching have, have learnt a lot. And don't forget to uh, find us on Facebook, uh, the Archaeology Metal Detecting Magazine page on Group, uh, the Big Detecting Show on, um, which is the group which is for tonight's show. Uh, we have every week, and. Um, the website, www.archmdmag.com, lots on there. As I said at the start of the show, we've got lots of new things coming on there. Fantastic article on there today regarding metal detectorists and archaeologists. So uh, thank you again, young man, and I will speak to you soon, no doubt. No, I've thank got, you. I've got to send you that, that article, haven't I? Yeah, and tell people to get on detectornetwork.com where they can chat with me and ask me any questions because I'm not a great lover of Facebook. So if they want to ask me any questions about Simplex, get on there. And, what, uh, what he said. Yeah. What he said. Yeah. And I look forward to speaking, uh, hopefully, this week to Scott and arranging for next week. Uh, yeah. This week's guest, unfortunately, uh, one of the original guests for tonight was unable to make it. Uh, Scotty B, for people who don't know, the issues behind why Scotty's not here. Uh, we'll leave it there, but a lot of you do know. Uh, and he was supposed to be making an announcement today about the Detectagon event, which uh, we still don't know is happening or not because obviously Scott's got more pressing concerns at the moment. So uh, we'll hopefully have an update regarding Detectagon sooner rather than later and uh, hopefully have uh, Mr. Holden on next week's show. Uh, I'll speak to him in the next couple of days to arrange that. If you do want to come on the show, uh, even if it's just for five minutes to talk about anything, please contact us through any of the things that I've just said, uh, or Adrian will point, point us out to you, and we'll get you on and uh, chat about whatever, even if it's for a full show. So uh, thank you all again for watching. Thank you, Adrian, for coming on, and thank you, thank Luke, you. for producing. I'm yeah, Dave Sadler. You. Have a good week, everyone, and good night. Bye.
I'm Dave D, and you're watching XP Team USA. Hi guys, Aaron here. Now, if you've got nothing else to do, and I mean nothing else to do, absolutely nothing else to do, why not pop over to YouTube and check out South Coast Detecting? Yeah. 